Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. I'm Mike. This is a safe place where we love all movies. So, if you're a film snob, genre snob, format snob, this is either the place for your happy rehabilitation or it's not the place for you at all. Otherwise, to everyone else, welcome. Come on in. So another massive collection haul this time, once again. I've been gone a little longer than usual. Uh, but yeah, I got quite a few movies over here. Starting with uh, movies I picked up from the Kino Lorber sale. Kino usually has quite a few sales, um, but I usually don't get to participate in them because they happen around the time of other sales where I've already spent all my money. So uh, fortunately though, this time, not the case, I was able to uh, partake and uh, I got 40 titles 40 uh, items from the sale uh, But before I get to those I do have one Kino Lorber uh, release I picked up that is not was not part of the sale and that is of course the latest Film noir dark side of cinema number 15 Because <laughs> of course another one a new one um, As always good news for me love these we get Man Afraid, uh, The Girl in the Kremlin, and uh, The Tattered Dress. So happy to get another set of film noir from Kino Lorber. Yeah. So, on to the sale. I got 39 uh, Blu-rays and one DVD. And that one DVD is because the Blu-ray was apparently sold out. But that DVD is The Victim, a made-for-TV movie with Elizabeth Montgomery. We know I love my made-for-TV movies. I'm happy Kino has been putting some of these out, and there's a couple more in the pile. But The Victim... Pyromaniac's Love Story. This one I got uh, because mainly because... It upgrades a VHS. A lot of VHS upgrades in this uh, update. Um, this one was only like $4.99, so just grabbed it. Eight Million Ways to Die. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen this. I don't remember much about it, but it's, an How, it's a How Ashby film. And it is upgrading this VHS. Next up, Astro Zombies. How do you not pick up a movie with that cover? I've of course seen this a long time ago. It's not a great film, but um, it's just one I wanted to have in the collection, especially for that cover. Astro Zombies. Then a Western that I, I watched a few years ago and really enjoyed. That is Yellow Sky. With Gregory Peck and Baxter, uh, Richard Widmark. Really good little film. It's from 1948. Highly recommend it. Then uh, a film noir that's not in any of the box sets. Cry of the City. I saw this one not too long ago. That's from 1948 also. Then here's uh, the other TV movies I was talking about. It's a screaming double feature. Betty Davis in Scream, Pretty Peggy, and Olivia de Havilland in The Screaming Woman. I've seen neither of these, so I'm eager to check them out. But picked up the screaming double feature. Then... Some John Wayne with Brannigan. And I got this one to upgrade this VHS. Some Bruce Campbell. Terminal Invasion. This one uh, is relatively new from Kino. I watched this movie years ago and enjoyed it. Also has Chase Masterson from Deep Space Nine in it. A fun little movie. Terminal Invasion. 
Uh, most of the uh, the Blu-rays in this sale were like nine ninety nine. Some were like seven eighty nine. Few were four ninety nine. This was the most expensive one at eleven ninety nine. So <laughs> Stone Cold, and I think that's because it's um, pretty new uh, to their um, release schedule. This is from nineteen ninety one. It's a fun movie. Upgrades this VHS. Got some Vincent Price and Christopher Lee and Edgar Allan Poe. The oblong box. Watched this one years ago, probably like 20 years ago. Um, and it will upgrade this VHS. Next up, a movie that I heard recommended on, I believe, Pure Cinema Podcast. From one of the guests. I knew I had it on VHS, so this will be an upgrade. Scissors. And this VHS will go away. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. A movie that um, I had seen on the shelves, I'd heard of, but never really looked into. Had I known it dealt with time travel, I would have watched it by now, I'm sure. Retroactive. And because you couldn't not get this, <laughs> also known as Dracula's Dog, Zoltan, the Hound of Dracula. How do you not see this in a sale and buy it? I <laughs> uh, haven't watched that yet. Um, one that I heard uh, Tarantino mention um, in, in talking about some other movie um, a movie I'd heard of, but never really looked into, and then lo and behold, it was uh, part of the sale, so I grabbed it. The Ground Star Conspiracy with George Papard. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that's about. Another film noir that's not part of one of their box sets, uh, Pitfall. And this will upgrade... A VHS as well. Adventures of Captain Marvel, or as they call him today, Shazam. For those of you who don't know, this is Shazam was the original Captain Marvel, and uh, this serial. Uh, it's from 1941. This is a 12-chapter serial, so it's uh, 216 minutes of Captain Marvel. Um, and it's actually pretty impressive. I've watched this. I have the VHS, which I'm keeping. It has some um, artwork where uh, the character's costume is blue, which is fun. Um, but this is actually not too bad. So any of you who um, <clears throat> really like Shazam and want to see a really... Uh, older uh, version this is out there Million Dollar Mystery a film in the vein of uh, Scavenger Hunt and it's a mad 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 world um, I got this upgrade VHS but there you go Next up, Morgan, a suitable case for treatment with David Warner and Vanessa Redgrave. This is a quirky movie. It's <laughs> it's goofy and funny. Um, and I got this to upgrade this VHS, which is where I first watched the movie. Then, No Retreat, No Surrender. This is a fun movie. Early appearance with John claude Van Damme. Um, upgrading VHS there. Another movie I first heard about years ago on the Pure Cinema Podcast. Silent Partner. 
great movie and it will actually upgrade VHS I recently watched the shark exploitation documentary on Shudder thought it was really really good um, this is one they mentioned that I saw as part of the sale, so I grabbed it because I didn't own it, hadn't seen it. Tinturera, Tiger Shark. So I'm looking forward to that. And in the same vein, another movie I did not own and have not seen, Tentacles. Next up, Buried Alive, and I have to resist. Matter of fact, no, I don't have to resist. I would normally pronounce this Buried Alive, which I understand is not the common accepted pronunciation of the word, just as Bury is not the common accepted pronunciation of Barry, but I happen to have grown up in one of the small pockets of the English-speaking world where Either way of, of pronouncing that was acceptable, and uh, I rather like Bury and Buried because it it uh, creates a distinction between Bury as in the thing you eat. So I'm going to go on record in saying I support the pronunciation of Buried as Buried, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, Jennifer Jason Lee. Frank Darabont directed movie. There's a lot of movies with that title. And that will actually upgrade VHS. Uh, then, Winter Kills. And that will upgrade this VHS. This is a, a bizarre little movie. <laughs> Happy to upgrade that. Then, those are all the uh, Kino Lorber Studio Classics with, you know, that kind of spine. Some of the other things uh, we have from the Redemption line, Schizo, which also upgrades a VHS for me, but I'm keeping the VHS. From the regular Kino Classics line, The Gollum. And this will upgrade VHS. This is from 1920. The front page from 1931. Uh, this one and the next one I have on VHS that I'm keeping, they were these really strange... I should have uh, brought them here for the update just to show you how strange they are. Really strange VHS from a, an obscure company that no one's ever heard of that are just so weird uh, looking that I want to keep them. <laughs> um, I know I've intrigued you now, so maybe I'll have to uh, grab those and um, show them a little later. But, uh, yeah, front page. And the other one I was talking about, A Farewell to Arms. This one with Gary Cooper and Helen Hayes from 1932. Then, uh, one that I can't believe I've put off till now, Diary of a Lost Girl, with Louise Brooks. Um, I've talked about Pandora's Box on here before, it's being in my pantheon. This is the uh, other movie by her that I saw the same day I saw Pandora's Box on a Turner Classics double feature. And uh, so I'm happy to finally get that. Then from uh, Cohen, picked up Intolerance, and that will upgrade this VHS. Then some of the Code Red stuff, Devil's Express. I have seen this, it's an interesting movie, um, but a great cover, great cover. <laughs> this is one for those of you who have seen all the airport movies and we're looking for more. Starflight One. 
This is uh, literally a what hypersonic airplane that uh, uh, accidentally finds its spelt, finds itself in space, and uh, they have to figure out how to rescue them, save the people, etc. So it's kind of like a disaster movie, like an airport movie, except we have an airplane in space. <laughs> so good luck. But yeah, I've seen this. It's it's fun. Uh, Star Flight 1, also known as Star Flight, the plane that couldn't land. Next up, a horror movie that I've seen but never owned. Dead Pit. Uh, the Great Alligator. I do have this on VHS, but I'm keeping it because it's a nice old Gorgon clamshell. Great Alligator. Hot Touch. And this one I got because it will upgrade this VHS. Then some Scorpions. Some Scorpions. Some, <laughs> some uh, Scorpion uh, releasing DVD, uh, Blu-rays that were part of the sale. The Barbarians with the Barbarian Brothers. And this I got to actually upgrade a VHS. The Killing Time with Kiefer Sutherland. This one I also got to upgrade VHS. And the final one from the sale. A, um, a version of this story that uh, uh, on film that I have not seen. Ten Little Indians from 1974 with Oliver Reed. I've seen many of the other uh, versions of this story which is also known as and then there were none on film this one I hadn't seen um, so I'm actually uh, pretty eager to see what they do with the story and that's everything from the Kino sale so yeah that was a great uh, great haul for me moving on to some vinegar syndrome and uh, partner label items this is a mixture of stuff from, I think, June and July and um, uh, Partner Month Sale, where they put certain titles on sale for one day only. The two items that are actually Vinegar Syndrome it's, uh, proper releases, uh, Wolfpack, one of the VSAs. I was, meaning, I was wanting to get this and I was waiting for a sale, so grabbed the Wolfpack. Western Double Feature, Hot Snake, Guns and Guts, same thing, waiting for sale. Then, this is a newer one uh, from VH Hitfest, VHS Hitfest. Adjust Your Tracking, now this... This I have already, this I've seen. I wanted to get this for the updated special features. And of course, it's on Blu-ray right here. Uh, more about this later. From Umbrella, Midnight Spares. And I got this to upgrade this VHS. From Saturn's Core, we have At Dawn They Sleep, and that of course has a bonus movie of Reap of Evil on it. Got this nice package of the Tortured Soul Trilogy, so you have parts 1, 2, and 3, plus there's a couple other films on there, so uh, for the price, this was a nice, uh, nice set. I haven't seen any of these, uh, so I'm looking forward to them all. Uh, we have 16 Tongues, which is one of their past releases. And I uh, wanted to pick that up. From Dark Star, a movie that I've wanted to see for quite a while. Um, 
the Australian film A Fair Game. Culture Shock, no longer a partner label. So, um, got these two, and uh, they just put a bunch of the um, other, well, the rest of the uh, label stuff on sale for like $10 without slipcover. So, I, I ordered some more. But uh, this time around, I got the Flesh Merchant, Raw Nerve. And this is one I had to get from eBay because I was waiting for a sale, wasn't paying attention, and it sold out. Fortunately, I was able to uh, find a seller on eBay who was selling it for basically the price it would have been on the website. Late Night Classics Volume 1. Those two films. So I'll grab that. And then one from a uh, former partner label. Now officially on their own. Fun City Editions. Happy to get Primetime Panic 2. Three more made-for-TV movies. Uh, when I first opened the package, I was uh, momentarily surprised it wasn't in the same box format that the first one was, but then it occurred to me, hey, they're no longer with OCN, so probably can't do that. So um, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Got these three uh, additional TV made for TV movies so that's awesome from 88 films moving on now I got a box set that's been out a little while in the line of duty one through four get a booklet two posters and then the four movies the only one I've seen is yes madam which is uh, considered part two not that I think it really matters um, but yeah uh, this is one of those that I wasn't going to get, but then went ahead and got anyway. <laughs> but yeah, In Line of Duty 1 through 4 with uh, Michelle Yeoh and um, Cynthia Rothrock. And there's another actress I'm not going to remember at the moment. But yeah. Then, speaking kind of, of, of In the Line of Duty... <laughs> I have owned, I, I own all seven of these films on DVD already, but two of them were uh, only in wide and um, full screen. And the cheapest way to fix that was to just buy the set of all seven on Blu-ray. So that's what I did. I got the UK edition of the Police Academy movies. <laughs> uh... I'm happy to have these all on widescreen and to just be done with you know that uh, goal. If if my opinion was ever asked, I'm not a fan of the packaging. <laughs> and it's, you know, not just that you have that very plain packaging and, and, and on the slipcover, but it's on the regular box. It's on all the discs. I don't know if they couldn't get the artwork. It's a it's a UK set. I don't know. I mean, you have glimpses of the uh, poster artwork, not the logo or anything, but um, they have that on the back. I don't know, but you know, whatever. I don't like to complain. So just happy to have that goal of upgrading full screen movies done got the latest marvel movie guardians of the galaxy volume 3 got this from disney movie club and i was looking around real quick just to see if there's something else i could throw on my order something uh, cheap something and i discovered something i didn't know existed uh it was disney doing the hardy boys a long time ago Hardy Boys, uh, The Mystery of the Applegate Treasure. Apparently this was aired, uh, uh, I guess, serial serialized on some Disney show of some kind. Um, 
so there's 19 chapters. Therefore, it's 273 minutes of Hardy Boys. <laughs> but I figured, hey, got two discs there. Um, I, I grew up reading the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, so uh, really curious to check that out. Severin. First up, a couple DVDs just to uh, get these movies in the collection. This first one, uh, because I thought, I really thought I had already owned this. I thought it was already in the collection. I was shocked to discover it wasn't. I was thinking of this other movie, I think, called War Game or something. Or maybe I just thought I bought it and didn't. But I finally got uh, Threads. And um, if you're a fan of realistic, post-apocalyptic, what-could-happen movies, and, if you, and you've never seen this... This is uh, one to watch. Um, maybe do a double feature of this and Testament some night. Uh, to, if you want to get really depressed. <laughs> but yeah, grab that. And uh, then because I discovered uh, I had this in my collection on blue, uh, VHS and I needed to upgrade it, I grabbed Retribution on DVD just to do that. Then, and then. Another one I was not going to get because of the price. And then I saw it would actually upgrade a few full screen DVDs in my collection. It was produced by Kirla Janice, who did uh, the folk horror box set and other awesome things. Yep, I got it. I got it. <laughs> it's a heavy set. It's got a huge book, 356 page book, 24 films, plus two soundtrack CDs, 15 discs. It's a monster. And I honestly don't know if I don't think I've watched any of these before. So this will be entirely uh, new viewings, and that's awesome. So, got this brick. <laughs> yeah, so Severin, uh, you know. Yeah. Next up, a couple, uh, actually older Universal TCM releases that have been in my Amazon cart forever, and I think I actually ended up getting these on eBay. The Dark Crimes 1 and 2 sets of film noir movies. I've seen all three on here. Uh, Glass Key, Phantom Lady, The Blue Dahlia. And actually, this VHS will be upgraded. Volume 2... Uh, you and Me and Ministry of Fear I never owned. Undertow and Hollywood Story, however, I do have on Kino Blu-ray box sets, so I mainly got it to get uh, these other two, and because, well, you get Volume 1, you gotta get Volume 2, because, you know, collector mentality. Uh, had to do it. Some more film noir. Criterion, July, uh, Barnes & Noble sale. I did get one title from the actual, from an actual Barnes & Noble. This one in Altoona, Pennsylvania. I was in, in, uh, in the area. My closest Barnes & Noble is in Frederick, Maryland, and I just rarely get, get out that way. But the one that I got in the store was Cronenberg's Crash. And I uh, got that to upgrade this VHS. And then, of course, I think uh, Amazon, for both of these next uh, items, lowered their prices because Barnes & Noble was having the sale. So I took advantage of that and got Kiss Me Deadly, which is another film noir. But this is an essential film noir that I haven't seen. So uh, I need to fix that. And so... Uh, either this November or 
before that, I'm going to watch this. Kiss Me Deadly. And then, <laughs> years ago on this channel, before I was even on camera, I uh, bought a DVD of a single movie, and I said at the time, I got this because I will probably never get the Criterion set of all of them. <sighs> well, <laughs> I was wrong. Got the Godzilla, the uh, Showa era films, 1954 to 1975. This is not new. I know you've seen this before if you watch channels like this. Um, so you have a uh, book uh, describing all the films, but then you have Blu-rays of all the movies from that era. And as of this moment, I've... I've seen all but two of them, I think. Enjoy these greatly. Yeah. So, I got this. It was on sale. And that will actually upgrade <laughs> a lot of VHS. Upgrade this one, and this one. this one and this one and this one <laughs> and this one and this one so that freed up some shelf space actually and because I got that I couldn't help it I ended up from Arrow getting the Gamera Showa era box set with those films. Um, and I know that this connects to the other Gamera set of later films. And as a collector, you, they know that that drives me crazy. But for now, I'm going to resist that. <laughs> um, but this set, even though I've seen most of these, uh, it only actually up, upgrades one VHS. But yep, got that. Also from Arrow, a new release. The next Euro Western collection of Blood Money. Uh, I'm so happy they're doing these. You get uh, a booklet and a poster and these titles. $10,000 Blood Money. Vengeance is Mine. Find a Place to Die, which is, I believe, the only one I've seen in this set so far. And Metallo. Kill him. <laughs> Kill him good. So, yeah. Very... Very happy they keep doing this. Another uh, Scream Factory site exclusive... I keep getting me with these because this one upgrades a full screen DVD. Skull Spirit. So this full screen DVD will go away. But yeah. Still expensive for what you get. And they still get shipped in bubble mailers. From MVD Rewind, uh, this former Vinegar Syndrome title, which I never got on the Vinegar Syndrome, uh, from Vinegar Syndrome, LA Wars, I uh, have seen it, it's a fun movie, so wanted to make sure I at least grab this edition, since I missed out on the other one. Some... Warner Archive titles. Mr. Nice Guy, Blu-ray. Friend of mine recommended this uh, and uh, let me know that this was the extended cut with 20 more minutes. I do have the theatrical, uh, I guess US theatrical DVD 
which I'll still keep so that I so that I have that cut. But uh, grab that. Um, I haven't watched this, uh, which I'm surprised by. So when I do watch it, I'll watch this one. Then I got a couple more Barbara Stanwyck DVDs from Warner Archive. Um, steadily just picking these off my Amazon cart. Got the Mad Miss Manton. And the Woman in Red. I love that cover. So two more of those to my Stanwyck collection. Then uh, I just wanted to get a simple DVD copy of this. I wasn't looking for anything uh, special. But I wanted to make sure I got both cuts of the movie. So this is just a regular old um, uh, Sony DVD of Curse of the Demon slash Night of the Demon. And that will upgrade this VHS. And I think that brings me to the final title. I feel like I've been here all day, but I love it. From SRS, a retro collection. I've been uh, picking these off my Amazon card as well. But how do you not buy a movie with this title and this artwork? Garden Tool Massacre. Love my shot on video. Love that. Look at that. So I'm eager to watch this. Garden Tool Massacre. <sighs> Here's everything else I picked up. Went to a big 4th of July yard sale. It's called the Mile Long Yard Sale, but it is much, much more than that. You could not possibly go to every yard sale in one day and uh, the portion of yard sales I went to I only found movies to buy at two places I got these three from one spot and then all of these from another here we have a box set from Anchor Bay Um, and I really hate when this should be the front and they do it backwards. And then there's nothing on the spine, which is really bothersome. But, oh well. Did find one Warner Archive disc. And so these VHS and redundant DVDs can be deleted from the collection. Picked up this Dark Sky DVD at Dollar General. From a Goodwill, got these, including another Fox Studio Classics, this one number 16. And then from a thrift store, got these. From an antique mall. And so these VHS can be deleted. From eBay, I got this DVD to replace the full screen DVD in my collection. From Goodwill. Uh -huh. 
This uh, is a nice two disc edition with lots of special stuff. There's some photo cards, there's a comic book, there's a booklet um, for three bucks. Couldn't pass it up even though I already, I already own the movie. And these will upgrade these two VHS. From Dollar Tree. From a Goodwill. And they will upgrade these VHS. Got a bunch of movies from an antique mall. A lot of them uh, horror or otherwise interesting. Let's take a look. This is pretty neat from SRS, a Tim Ritter double feature. I believe I found this Criterion Edition. Theodore Dreyer's Vampire. Dollar forty nine Criterion Edition. Amazing. And most of these were either a dollar forty nine or ninety nine cents. This one looked like it would be a riot. This one is Anchor Bay. This one is the only one that I got from a separate booth entirely, and I think it was three dollars. This one looked very interesting and uh, indie. Found a blue underground title, as well as a Universal Vault series made on demand disc. And a Warner Archive. This one coming from a library.
Kino disc here. The old dark house. Very happy to find this Synapse disc of Street Trash. This is one I've been meaning to pick up for quite some time. And that'll do it. Nice haul from the Antique Mall. So these VHS can be deleted from eBay. A few pickups from Walmart's $5 bin. And this one will upgrade these to VHS. From Goodwill. And these will upgrade these VHS. Got this DVD from eBay to upgrade this VHS that was getting a little mold. Dollar Tree, once again, having movies. This is what I picked up. And this will upgrade this VHS. So for today's entries in the Pantheon, I've chosen two documentaries. One of them is one I just showed you and promised to talk about. Adjust your tracking. This is my favorite documentary on VHS, VHS collecting, out of all the many uh, now VHS documentaries that there are. Uh, this one I particularly liked because it focuses on the collector and their collections. That's really what I want to see. Um, you know, the history of, of the VHS, you know, I've, I've seen that in other documentaries but the collectors in their collections that's who I want to hear from that's what I want to see uh, so this was especially good because of that uh, this is the new edition obviously on blu-ray uh, what I had before and what I still have and what I will still have is this collector's edition which was a DVD and actually VHS copy of the movie. So you got a VHS and a DVD. And the DVD actually even, there's two DVD set, but there's even another bonus disc of stuff in there. But the VHS uh, copy is the extended cut which is 110 minutes the um, regular cut is 80 minutes so this has half an hour more so uh, typically when I watch this movie I watch this one <laughs> and I was a little disappointed this was not on the new blu-ray um, because this has even more of the collectors in their collections um, and, you know, maybe those scenes that were not in here, um, I haven't checked. Uh, they could be deleted scenes that are put in the, um, the Blu-ray. They could be some of the extended interviews and stuff like that. But, you know, regardless, it's all good. Uh, but, yeah. So, uh, just your tracking. Um, I've watched a few times because, well, especially back in the day when I really collected VHS. It was really uh, an inspiration to watch that, get in the mood to, you know, go out and find VHS and then do it. Um, I remember so many, so many trips hunting VHS tapes. Uh, as you see in my uh, updates, I'm constantly upgrading VHS and that's because I have thousands of them. 
I was a pretty hardcore VHS collector. Not the kind of collector that would, um, you know, spend lots of money on tapes, but a hardcore collector in terms of going out like every weekend, trying to hit up every uh, possible place I could think of that might have tapes, um, traveling to other towns looking for tapes. Um, it was it was quite the obsession, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, there are obviously lots of tapes that I'm still going to hold on to, especially um, you know some of the more obscure stuff, some of the certain labels. Uh, but at some point about five years ago, and we're talking a, a lifetime of, of collecting VHS from like the, the late 90s to like 2018, I collected VHS. And uh, I had, I mean, I know people who have lots more than this, but I think at, at the height I had about, I don't know, 8,000 some VHS. And I'm now down to about half that because I've been upgrading them. And about five years ago, I finally decided, you know what? Uh, it really bugs me <laughs> that these uh, tapes are full screen, pan and scan, pan and scan if you're lucky, which is not a plus thing, not a positive thing anyway, but some... some uh, Full screens are just, let's just <laughs> put it right in the middle and if things get cut off, oh well. Um, it just bugged me that um, these movies were not in the proper aspect ratio. And that just really got to me, it really got to me. Uh, and then I was getting a little nervous that, hey, they're no longer selling players. I mean, I know you can get them. I have several stockpiled. But, you know, kind of made me nervous. Also, uh, considering I've spent a lifetime buying these from people's collections, you know, they've been in garages and basements and attics and who knows where, um, I would continually be disappointed to go to my collection, pull out a tape from the sleeve and find some mold just because, you know, who knows where it came from. And in the time since I've had it, it had time to... Uh, develop so i just finally just said you know what dvds are cheap enough now blu-rays are even getting cheap enough now i can try to upgrade what i can and if a movie only exists on vhs wonderful i'll keep it that way so uh, for those of you who may have been wondering why i'm always saying uh, always showing vhs being upgraded and leaving the collection that's why these are collection updates after all so whatever's going in or whatever's going out that's what i show but yeah, this edition uh, I was eager to get, not just because it, you know, it's on Blu-ray now, because it has more special features. One of the special features I was, I'm really looking forward to, and I started already watching, but haven't finished, was uh, collector updates. Seeing what the collectors, um, 10 years later, what they're doing, what their collections look like. That's what I was really interested in. So, anyway, uh, adjust your tracking. One of my favorite films. It's in the Pantheon. One of my favorite documentaries. There you go. The other film I want to talk about today is from 2011. It's a documentary called Take Me Away Fast. And uh, this is not available uh, on home video i think there was a limited dvd release to people who supported the project uh, but otherwise it's doesn't exist so what i'm showing here is a screenshot of the of the title on from the from the movie and where did i see this uh, it's on youtube but it's not on YouTube under the title of Take Me Away Fast. I mean, you can, I think you can find it if you type that in. It's like a search a trigger, but uh, I guess for them to have it on YouTube and it's easier to <laughs> pretend it's called something else. Anyway, that is right now the only place I know you can watch it. But 
in the spirit of documentaries about collecting, this one is about collecting vinyl records. And there are many documentaries about collecting vinyl records, and I like a lot of them. This one, however, is like Adjust Your Tracking about a particular collector and what he's collecting, his collection, what he's going after. This is about a guy named Frank Gosner who, um, uh, in, the, in the documentary and what he does normally is he, he goes to West Africa. I think he even lived there for some time. Maybe he lives there now. I don't know. And he would go around looking for uh, obscure um, African funk and disco and um, whatever else records. Because these are records that were made there, are only available there. And so that makes them obscure and rare. And I've heard, well, the ones I heard in the documentary were awesome. Uh, but it is about him going there. It is, it is chronicling his his searches, where he's going to places, people's homes, what have you, looking at the records, um, buying records, he's playing records, he's, he's visiting some of the musicians who are on the records and saying, hey, look, I found your record and playing it for them, and they're amazed. It's just a wonderful celebration of, of seeking out um, something for a collection that is rare and valuable and wonderful. And I have here where I first learned about Frank Gossner is in this book, Dust and Grooves Adventures in Record Collecting. Uh, this is one of the best books about record collectors that I've ever uh, found. I, uh, I'm a vinyl collector, but I'm a passive vinyl collector. That means, whereas obviously I'm an active movie collector, I'm a passive vinyl collector because I know that if I ever really leaned into that hobby, I would be in financial trouble in a minute. <laughs> I mean, it's already uh, tough enough collecting uh, movies and comics. I can't add anything else there. So if I stumble upon records that are cheap, that look good, I might pick them up, but I don't go out digging, as they say. Uh, it just would not be financially viable. <laughs> but I do enjoy, uh, I guess, living vicariously through all the collectors in this book. And I learned about Frank in this chapter about him. And there he is. And this is just a you know a little uh, piece about him, and essentially the same kind of stuff that he's doing in the documentary. Uh, so, of course, I recommend this book, but I recommend the uh, the movie uh, "Take Me Away Fast," which is just a fascinating look at a very specific uh, collector looking for a very specific type of a vinyl record and it's just really impressive and I wish I wish someone would put that out on uh, something widely available so that I could own it uh, but otherwise check it out if you can try it on YouTube um, yeah take me away fast <laughs> So for this episode's uh, bookshelf segment, in the spirit of adjust your tracking and VHS and VHS collectors and collecting, I grabbed two books uh, I have that are about VHS. But before that, as promised, speaking of VHS, I did go uh, find these in my collection. The VHS I have of the front page and the farewell to arms uh, that are in this really weird format. And I'm keeping them because of that. I've never seen um, videos from this company anywhere else. I first bought these at um, some little store that popped up and then went away where they sold everything for a dollar. It wasn't, you know, like Dollar Tree or anything like that. It was just some store where everything was a dollar. You go in, one week it's there, the next week it's gone. Um, 
And they had these. And I mean, this was a long time ago. But they just took a screenshot of the title. Very generic um, on the outside. The company looks to be Movies and More Video System. And then, this is the other weird thing, on the tapes themselves. <laughs> this is what they did. Just one big sticker. <laughs> so, that's why I'm keeping these, because they are so bizarre. And I, I've never seen these. I've never come across these ever. Even even the tapes are, are designed a little strangely. There's a little strange little uh, diamond divot. Uh, the the plastic is I don't know strange. Anyway, uh, so I just wanted to show you what I was talking about. As for the VHS books, okay. So one. Th what we love about collecting VHS, at least the ones that I still collect, uh, besides cover art, which is why a lot of people do it, are tapes that are just weird. And they're usually not movies. They're usually tapes about weird things. And this book celebrates that. VHS, Absurd, Odd, and Ridiculous Relics from the Videotape Era by Joe Pickett and Nick Prewer. And so you get fun stuff like, uh, let me see here. A VHS about 10 crunchy carrots. <laughs> uh, introduction to muzzle loading with this guy with a fox on his head, fox hat. Jazz dance class with these winners. <laughs> uh, you know, just a. Oh, here we go. Clown Ministry video. Uh, then grooming and bathing your cat. Good luck. The magic of squirrel calling. <laughs> and uh, here's one that just looks creepy because there's a dummy in here. Magic Star Traveler. I don't know how well you can see that. But in the spirit of this book, I went to my collection and I pulled three videos like that. Including one with the dummy. Just to uh, show you some of the weird things in my collection. Ricky goes to church. <laughs> yeah, there's a dummy. And yeah, it looks to be creepy. Yeah, I found that in a thrift store. This one is... Uh... Creepy. Joey learns the touching rule. Yeah. This is an eight minute video, appropriate for preschool and kindergarten, ages four through six. Includes discussion guide. I found this in a Goodwill and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Now the funny thing about this, the funny thing about this, in the booklet, we learn that this this was a revised edition because the original video was called Willie Learns the Touching Rule. <laughs> and I think someone realized we might want to change the kid's name with a video of this nature. And the final one, just for fun. <laughs> Honey, I'm Pregnant too. Hosted by John Schneider. <laughs> A pregnancy guide for men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I, if I see tapes like this out there, I still get these. Because this is not coming to DVD or Blu-ray. Alright? The other book... Uh, we uh, who collect uh, Blu-rays are aware of the artist known as the Dude Designs. Dude also did a book. 
VHS video cover art. A collection of awesome VHS cover artwork. You know, the kind of stuff that dude would, you know, be inspired by. You know, this kind of stuff. And, and I like that it tells you um, the distributor, the release date, and then the artist at the bottom. But yeah, lots of awesome VHS covers. And I love that they include the back cover and the spine. I always wish that books with uh, vinyl covers would do the same thing. Because I really enjoy looking at back covers of vinyl records as well. But yeah, this is a whole book just full of VHS cover art. So, if you are someone who loves that aspect of VHS collecting, find this book. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. So yeah, and the, the Dude Designs, also known as Thomas Hodge, if you're looking for the book. So yeah, that'll do it for this episode of The Cinematic Attic. Till next time, everyone. Enjoy your movies.